Start off with your lighting. It's the most energy efficient way to put money back in your pocket and to make a difference for the environment in a positive one. Replace your current incandescent bulbs with more energy efficient ones. They can be CFLs or nowadays the LEDs are getting very inexpensive. If you can afford those, they last longer than the CFLs. They don't have a, even a minuscule amount of mercury, which a CFL does, and they use less water to put out more foot candles. LEDs are coming in because they're um, just more efficient. That light bulb will save you money in the long run. That's a very easy thing to do. These are my green tips, but I want to hear yours. If you have some way to save energy, save natural gas, electricity, water, save the environment, please write us at onbegleystreet.com. Hi, my name is Ed Begley Jr. You might recognize me from television film appearances. I've been an actor since 1967, so I've got 43 years worth of relationships here in this one room. I'm an actor by trade, but I have another passion that drives me. That's promoting sustainable living and preserving Earth's natural resources. The debate is over. On, on uh, global warming, the debate is very clear. It's out there in the scientific communi community. Read peer-reviewed study. As an environmentalist, I'm always looking for ways to reduce my carbon footprint. As a father, I'm always looking for ways to teach my daughter the value of a dollar and to lead by example. As a husband, I'm always looking for ways to keep my lovely wife happy. Now I have an opportunity to do it all as my family embarks on an adventure to build a state-of-the-art home with all the eco-friendly bells and whistles. This is my lovely wife, Rochelle. You can appease him and the technology and all that, but if it's ugly, it ain't it. I mean, you know. With the chance to finally get the dream home she's always wanted, Rochelle, well, sometimes we see things a little differently. My life is really going to change. How much can I pay you not to tell Ed about this? <laughs> and I could do it with any device that's turned on. I could look at it from far away and go, Mr. Gorbachev, take down that wall heater. Oh my God, this is, I can only... This is the this greatest is going place to be I've ever been to. A nightmare. Listen, you can hear the drip, drip, drip not of blood, but of water being wasted from the old technology that was part of this 1936 house. My dad's crazy. And this is my beautiful and outspoken daughter, Hayden. She keeps the balance between me and Rochelle's vision of the perfect home. I appreciate it, but like when you have modern in the front of the home oh, and then you have on. zen in the back of the home. I... Suddenly we got a feng shui master here telling us how things should be around I'm the house. Saying, it's Where are you even, what, what Disney Channel match. show are you watching that is I'm informing you about this? Match. I'm never gonna move from the house I'm in. You don't have to build a new house to be green or sustainable or anything. You can do the, what Ed likes to say, the low hanging fruit. Energy efficient lighting, energy saving thermostat, you know, weather stripping around your doors and windows, little things that you can do. And that's what I did in my house that I live in right now. The front yard, you said to a friend one day, it looked like... The Adams family. The fence the kind was of the, broken. Uh, the dead garden. Yeah. It, was, it was very drought tolerant, very. but it didn't look so good. Most people in the world would consider the house we're currently in as a palace. And when I started in 1970, I didn't have a lot of money. I had to do the cheap and easy stuff. I lived in a lovely solar powered house. When I was okay. single, it was a hundred bucks a year. Then, you know, I got married and had a baby, so there's more people in the house, and there's things called blow dryers, apparently, and curling irons that I never knew about. She wanted a different house. I said, honey, there's wonderful people out there to date. I encourage you to meet people. We were gonna do kind of a remodel on the house. That was our thought, but then it became clear we couldn't do a remodel. She finally dangled the carrot in front of me of more roof space for solar panels, no big second story to our south that would block my existing solar panels, more rainwater catchment, bigger vegetable garden, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, there was a window of opportunity. He said he would have, he would entertain the idea of moving, which was like, ah! So when he did that, I went out and started looking and, the, and there's one requirement was that it had a south-facing roof line. Realized. She didn't know where south was. 
Yeah, I'm not very good that you way. You didn't have a compass. It's confusing here. I saw one, literally one house. One house, and I said, it has a south-facing roof line. I think it'll do. Now, finally, she wore me down. We're getting a new house. Okay. Do I get any points for finally doing this? I give you a million points. That You Fine. don't know what I was up against. He was adamant. No house, For 16 no years, way. it was no, 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 no. Yeah. Finally, a year ago, I said yes. See, so, so that should be a lesson. Take yes oh, for an answer, honey. Yes. Let's, let's do this, for God's sake. <laughs> a lot of people want to see how we're going to do this. So a big part of our process is spreading the word and getting inspiration from our friends. Peyton is very eager to get involved. She's a very green young lady. She is. Like you say, you know, it's like the Stockholm Syndrome. She identifies with her captors. <laughs> and so she now does all this green stuff uh, as a matter of course. My friend told me this story about a little boy and his grandfather who was on the beach. And there was a tidal wave that washed up millions and millions of starfish. The little boy picks one up and starts throwing a bunch back into the ocean. His grandfather comes up to him and says, what are you doing? It doesn't matter. And he picks one starfish up and he says, it matters to this one. And we're doing it, hopefully, to, uh, to uh, pass on to our children. You know, this is, a, this is all for my child. The future should not be frightening. Embrace it. The future is ours. Oh, the future doesn't scare me. <laughs> you scare me. <laughs> she and I never argue no. or anything, and this certainly wouldn't be a catalyst for any sort of friction between no, us, would it? No, no. No. Total agreement. Yeah, throughout. You've heard it so, here. <laughs> some couples might have a problem with a construction project like this, but not us. Not us. This is going to be yes. a wonderful time. Right, mm -hmm. honey? Right, honey. Over the next seven episodes, you'll see us deconstruct a house and begin to build a new one in the most environmentally friendly way possible. Next time on Bagley Street, we meet our architect, William Hefner, and learn about what it takes to get this done right. That's a very challenging project. See you next time on Bagley Street. On Bagley Street is a proud supporter of Greenwish,